Uh, this is the most important thing that's happened in Australia for many years. We're at the West, uh, uh, Children's Hospital in Westmead, standing on the grounds surrounding a labyrinth. Labyrinths are important in hospitals because the staff and the parents and the children all are in a process of change and stress and the labyrinth's known to relieve that stress and give people a little time out. It began when uh, Margaret, my wife, and I went to hear Richard Raw speak on spirituality while he was visiting Sydney and he mentioned that he had a labyrinth in the grounds of his centre for spirituality, uh, for action and contemplation in Albuquerque in New Mexico and he said how beneficial it was to everyone that comes to the centre and I was really puzzled. I remember writing the word labyrinth in my little pocket notebook and putting a question mark and when I looked up the internet that that night I was staggered as I said by the amount of information that even then was available on the net and I very quickly understood what a labyrinth really means and I began building them straight away. I've had it since ever since then I've had this very strong urge to, to build them, not only to walk them. And um, I just as I described in my speech, it just felt like this engine had turned on inside me and it's it's really powering me along. I started building them on the sand and as soon as I walked my first pattern I built a sharp pattern. And it wasn't easy to do that because there were people watching thinking, what is this fellow doing? One person came up and said, is it going to be a racetrack? And um, I walked it and I just had, as I was coming out, I just felt the joy building up inside me and, and I just started running. I just put my arms up and, and ran like I was flying. I just, just giving my spiritual child a run, I suppose. But uh, I knew then straight away that this was something that would be wonderful to have here at the hospital. So that's where it began. I gave a, a facilitated workshop with Margaret to the Medical Humanities Group at the University of Sydney a couple of years ago. And one of my now retired colleagues, a neurosurgeon, Michael Besser, was at the workshop and he, he was skeptical and that's fine, there's always some skepticism. But afterwards he was nodding and smiling and said, oh, I get it, I really understand now. He said, but it's all about the labyrinth in our middle ears. That was his take on it, that the constant turning and returning provides some sort of stimulation that's fairly equal on both sides. Nobody really knows, but it doesn't matter. It's not something that's solvable. You just walk and have it do whatever it's going to do for you on the day. It's nice to have everyone linking up and holding hands, especially if you can get the, uh, the thumbs pointing clockwise, because it generates a very powerful current of goodwill. And that'll be strong enough to hold the sacred space here pretty much permanently. When they are entering the pattern, when they're facing the pattern to enter it, they turn their back on the hospital, figuratively leaving all of that worry behind, and they're facing a symbol of hope. And then, and then when they're on their way out, they're facing the hospital again, refreshed and ready to deal with whatever has to come next. They're so happy. And um, it, uh, it just shows the power of the labyrinth as a, as a spiritual tool is, um, is it just draws people in.